And we have all seen the posters and videos. Shenyun Performing Arts is coming to a city near you. A troupe that is known to be the best worldwide for traditional Chinese dance. But what we see on stage is a result of years of hard work. So what's it really like behind the curtain? And what is life like as a Shenyun dancer? We have the pleasure to welcome Marilyn Yang and William Lee with us today to talk about this. And what many don't actually know is that they're siblings. So welcome to both of you. Yep. So what is it like? What was your childhood essentially like? Because that involves a lot of hard training and work and discipline at such a young age. Yeah, I mean, once you start dancing, it's like it ha you flip your world upside down. You're training for hours every single day. So you have a lot of basic dance training. But on top of that, also rehearsals. So every year we're putting on a completely new performance. That means we're on the road for six months and also at the base in New York for six months. And it's just a lot of training, very physical, but also a lot of mental. It's very mental because, um, I mean, learning movements is tiring, it's hard, and you have to use your brain just as much as your body. How did you even get, or how did either of you get to start to be dancers in Shenyun? How did this come about? And well, it started with me first, and my mom is a singer, and my dad actually directs movies and produces movies. So, wow. pretty involved in the arts, and my mom wanted me to try dancing when I was a young age. It, it seems like something that's a little bit odd for a young boy to try, but once I got into it, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the history that comes along with learning traditional classical Chinese dance, and also just, it's actually very physical. So, that was actually right. quite fun. That's nice, so that it was fun on top of all this hard work. And so, and then you decided to, yeah. let's say, follow in his footsteps, right? He, Even though he told, did he tell you about how, how much hard work that would be? Uh, he likes to say that I followed in his footsteps. Oh, okay. But for me, I think it was more like, I mean, when I watched the show, naturally, I was really awestruck with the female dancers. So it was definitely more of like that I was going for, like I wanted to pursue that, that, brilliant on stage like just it's just a really nice experience even when I was a small kid it was like one of my deepest memories I just kind of went blind into it and of course it was like it was like a shocking like change in lifestyle and everything but it's definitely I think he supported me coming and joining Shenyun because of he knew how much it benefited his life and it really made I think a change for all of us so when you went into it, how did you feel like, you know, was there like a, when you found out what it actually involves, how was that like for you? I think at first it was more like, oh, the show's so pretty and you just want to be on stage and just perform. But I think there's a lot that came into it that it's like, it changed me as a character and definitely a lot of to be able to train and try to become professional at anything and dance especially you have to have a lot of self-discipline and it's a lot more than just the physical aspect like you said is mm -hmm. I think it's a really humbling experience humbling experience so how was it for you was it difficult I imagine as a, as a 13 year old boy you also need to build up that discipline was that something difficult to do uh, definitely very difficult but it's something you almost you need to find what drives you to be a dancer. Like, just going into it because you like it, that's how you start. But as you dance, you know, or doing anything in life, you have to find, when things get tough, what really drives you. And for me, even though I was young at the time, the mission of Shin Yun is actually something that is really amazing. To revive a culture that was almost destroyed. To revive 5,000 years of traditional Chinese culture. And I think, when you think about it, even when things get hard, that is actually something that's very inspirational for a young person and mm. it really drove me through some of the tougher times. That is incredible that you understand this. How long have you been dancing now and what keeps you going now? Um, I started dancing when I was 10 years old. I would say that um, there's so many aspects to it. I definitely agree that it's, it's something so, it's hard to wrap your mind around at first at such a young age that I'm going to be reviving traditional Chinese culture. Um, but as I got more into it, I realized that it's just something really, it's something that's so much bigger than myself and it was a really special feeling to know that I'm part of something bigger and I'm part of a mm -hmm. team. What would you say is the hardest part and what's your favorite part of being a dancer? Who wants to go first? <laughs> yes, I would say the hardest part is 
just um, trying to become like really skilled at something it requires a lot of practice and there's always going to be times when you don't want to you don't want to get up in the morning to continue like the same schedule it's just a lot of it requires a lot of self-discipline and I think that's something very challenging because we all have always have those lazy days and oh, sure. <laughs> yeah and it's you want to you want to always be better than the you you were yesterday so if you want to keep on keep on climbing up that hill really it's sometimes you just feel like you stay in the same place for a while and you don't really see much improvement so it takes a lot of I think just the mental um, push to like sh strive to become better and know that there is really there's no limit to the the like no limit to how good you can get mm. so it's always you got to keep pushing yourself and I think that's something that's really challenging mm. be better than the you yesterday that's yes. awesome what about you something really hard is just the training can get very repetitive it's almost like you can think about like going to the gym and working out right you have to do the same uh, motion every time the same amount of reps and you have to keep building on top of that and mm -hmm. then maybe you recover a day and the next day you want to go back you're still kind of sore but you still have to go if you want to improve so dancing is the same thing it, the training is quite repetitive but what we present on stage every year is still different so there's a there's a both sides of that coin where it's repetitive training but new performance for us every year so what is your favorite part would that be your favorite part to perform on stage you know what's really good about being at Shen Yun is that we perform all over the world and mm. I started young but I traveled to so many different countries a hundred like over a hundred different cities in the world performing and uh, presenting classical Chinese dance on stage it's something that I'm quite proud of but it's just a really good experience for a young person that sounds awesome you had mentioned before which is the mission of Shen Yun so tell me a little bit more about what the mission exactly is and why it resonated with you so the mission of uh, Shen Yun is to revive authentic traditional Chinese culture and why that's important is because the CCP that's in China today the communist regime tried to systematically destroy traditional Chinese culture when they took over China. So there was a cultural revolution and they actually mm -hmm. systematically tried to destroy tr Chinese culture. They said that um, everything that is old is bad, like faith and tradition, all of these things that Chinese people have resonated with and is really the backbone of Chinese civilization for over 5,000 years, they try to get rid of that. Because when you are spiritual, you, you believe in, you know, um, you have your own beliefs, but when the CCP came in, right, you don't, they don't want people to have their own faith mm. and be individuals. They want you to just follow what the CCP says. They had all these different movements trying to destroy culture and all of a sudden, Shen Yun comes in and we're trying to revive this tradition, revive this culture, which is the backbone of Chinese civilization. And, you know, they're actually quite scared of that. So right. they've interfered with a lot of our performances all over the world. They interfered? How so? So, for example, uh, when we try to perform in some theaters, uh, for example, in South Korea, in Dominican Republic, and even in America, they would send letters to the theaters. theater managers, mm -hmm. and they would try to convince them not to host Shen Yun. Yeah, I think that's good to bring up, because that's a really dark part of history that I think people should be aware of. So why is it so valuable, this traditional Chinese culture that you want to share it with the world? I think that traditional Chinese culture, it's so rich with just so many virtues and just so many characteristics on how to be a better person and that's really embedded in the ancient Chinese civilization. Um, really the culture was is divinely inspired and everything was very spiritually tied. So the history of ancient China was really all about how to become a better person, how to become um, just be make society better mm -hmm. I think and if we were to bring back those values today that would definitely benefit just our society nowadays too for us when we do a lot of these ancient Chinese stories these characters we're not necessarily just acting it's not just an act that we put up but we really live in these virtues and we're always trying to cultivate these virtues in ourselves so that we embody them truly so when we portray them on stage it's really a realistic um, portrayal and it's not something that we're just trying to put on and put on an act for it's something I think because it's so true to ourselves the audience mm -hmm. can really feel the how rich and just how accurate 
it feels more genuine yeah. if you resonate with that character's emotions or what he's portraying. So, for example, uh, Mi Furin, she had to sacrifice for her baby. If you don't, if you're quite a selfish person, you might not resonate with those feelings or those virtues. And then what you portray on stage is not really going to connect with your character, and it might not connect with your audience. So that's why, if you want to portray a character well, you really need to resonate with the values that they represent. Right. So what exactly does that mean? With how does that manifest in your life when you say it represents you live by those values? What kind of changes do you make to your life to achieve that? I think it's a lot of the very small things. For example, Monkey King, he went from arrogant to humble, and that means that in your daily life, um, your actions and what you do should um, reflect humility. Right? I can't go around being like I'm the best. I can do all this. No, but you should know that there's always someone better than you, and yeah, actually, in Chinese, like Chinese culture, is believed to be divinely inspired. And for me, a lot of the skills and what I've learned in dance, I think, is also given to me from the divine. It's not just my own hard work, but that's like um, something that we believe Chinese people believe is from the gods. And even my my skills and abilities, I think, are also given to me from the divine as well. There, there is a saying, "学艺先学做人 So before learning a skill, first learn to be a good person. And oh. that, I think, for a lot of dancers, I think it's very important because you're, if you're a good person, you can better represent um, these values on stage. It's like, um, for example, if I'm telling you, uh, I like watermelon, something very <laughs> simple, right? We can all. But if I really hated watermelon, I dislike it. But I told you I like watermelon, you would feel something's a little bit off. But if I really like watermelon, and I tell, I'm telling you, I love watermelon. You gotta believe me. You gotta try this watermelon. You feel different. So the difference is one is true and one is false. But what I'm saying is the same thing. Yeah. You know what? That makes a lot of sense to me because when you say something that you don't stand by, it definitely will feel different. Because it sounds like this, all of this is so much more for you guys than just entertaining the audience. So if the audience would watch the show and would leave the show with just one takeaway, what do you hope it would be? I think we both agree that it would be hope. Actually, we want the audience to really have a sense of hope after watching our show, and I think that's what why it's so meaningful to us to put on our performances. I think one way we would put it is like there's always after a storm, there's always a rainbow, and so we want to have our audience really get to experience that and have hope leaving our theater, and I think it really helps that. In the sense that we're not just an entertainment show. We're not really just. We don't. We don't put it on so you can have just laughs or like、mm -hmm. just have like a momentary piece of like escape. It's more like we really want you to be able to take away these values because I think in Shenyun we have like 20 pieces in our whole program, and it's each story I think really has a. Deep moral, or something you can learn from, and that really is why I think traditional Chinese culture is so important. It's because、mm -hmm. each story it really has something that's meaningful. It has a moral to the story. The story of Shen Yun is actually a story of hope. Chinese culture was almost destroyed because of the CCP,、mm -hmm. but Shen Yun was founded in America, where we were able to revive this traditional Chinese culture and share it with the world. And Hope is something that is not a, ver or a value that is only you know good for the Chinese people. Hope should be something that everyone all over the world you know can.、Mm -hmm. It's something that everyone can resonate with the story, and it might just inspire you a little bit in your daily life as well. And along with it is the tradition and virtues of Chinese history and Chinese culture. It's something that's universal. So a really important parts of Chinese、uh, culture, such as faith, compassion, and humility. These are all things that we can have a little bit more of in our daily lives.、Mm -hmm. I just mentioned、uh, in the beginning of this interview, you guys are almost、um, out the, off to the airport.、You're, you guys are starting your tour. So where can people catch you guys on stage this season? I'm back in Europe. <laughs> My company is in、Surprise. Europe. <laughs>、yeah. So we have eight companies and we're traveling all over the world. But check out Shenyun.com for specific cities.、Mm -hmm. So are you going to be in Mexico again? I will be in Mexico this year. But okay, <laughs> always, <laughs> always. If you want to find William Lee, just find him in Mexico. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe I'll come and wave from wave to you from off stage. All right, it was a pleasure talking to you today.、Um, it was very insightful. I'm very inspired. I have to say.